dear students, uh, welcome to our lesson number five. This lesson, we'll be looking at how we use ICT for our literature review. The literature review chapter of our thesis, you know, is very important. That's where we will learn about the work that others have done before in that area. So how do we use ICT? We actually learned a little bit of it in our lesson, lesson three, where we use Google Scholar for uh, getting the title. In this lesson, we're going to dig very deep into use of ICT. As you can see, I'm in the Olusegun Obasanjo Presidential Library, the first and the best, the first presidential library in Africa, and one of the best in the world. And by the way, I decided to take this introduction, present this lesson in the presidential library uh, because we're talking about literature, we're talking about books. Well, of course, the presidential library is not only about books, it's about the life and times of a president. In this case, the life and times of President Olusegun Obasanjo, the Baba of Africa. I welcome you to the lesson, and I'm sure we are all together going to enjoy it. And this week we'll be looking at the use of ICT for review literature for a doctoral thesis. I have brought experts, Naja experts for you for this lesson. And uh, uh, over my right, introduce yourself. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Wonderful. And, uh, wonderful. Now, so today is about literature, literature review. Let's start with what literature review is. And let's ask from our experts, you know, from, from France, I said from France, mm -hmm. uh, uh, speaking in French, tell us what literature review is. Okay. Um, la review de la literature. Et si une revue des choses que les gens ont fait, les académiciens ont fait dans les thèses, les papiers académiques et tout ça. Ok, very good, very good. Now, uh, you're going to translate this for us in English. Yes. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Yeah, you're going to let your voice go, please. Literature review um, is all about academic journals, articles, theses, uh, papers generally written by people in the past. Oh, fine. So, written by people in the past, reviewing that literature, not just about the papers. Because here we have books, conference proceedings, journals, and several things which we call literature. This is literature that we have to review. And uh, this is a journal. And we are happy to show you the contribution of the director of the doctoral school of the University of Burundi. Professor Juma Shabani to this edition, uh, this issue of the journal, volume two, number one of 2013, uh, entitled Promoting Cultural Expressions in Africa Through Education by Juma Shabani. So this is a literature, anybody who's interested in studies of cultural expressions in education, they go to review uh, this literature. So in reviewing the literature in those days, before ICT gained prominence in scholarship. I recall that when I was doing my doctoral dissertation about 40 years ago, I was asked to go review the literature by my supervisor. What did I have to do? I had to go to the library. And as soon as the library, I pick up this book, I will read, read through it. It may take me like two days to extract regular literature from this. I will take another book, journal, I will, uh, uh, conference proceedings, I will read through this. I will go to another shelf, follow me, I go to another shelf in, in the library and then read through this. I will go to, uh, I keep going all over the place. And it may take me, actually it took me like six months to review the literature relevant to my area at the University of Ibadan. Today, thanks to ICT, it will take me 10 minutes to visit all the libraries in the world. All the libraries in Nigeria, Harvard Library, MIT Library, all the libraries. How do I need to do that? Through ICT. I'm looking for my phone. I mean, with my phone or with my, just like we have been doing it in class. 
All I need to do is get this tool, Google Scholar. I will search through all the literature that I find relevant in my film. So that is what we are in for this week. It's going to be a very enjoyable lesson. So still continuing on our discussion on literature review, I'd like you to know that there are two worlds, world for a scholar. The world of the known and the world of the unknown. You can see, what am I holding? I'm holding a top light. The world of the known and the world of the unknown can be exemplified by, say, you enter a stadium in Bujumbura in the dark, or you enter a stadium in Lagos in the dark, and you hold this top light. The area of the known is given by the circle that the light covers. As you can see in the stadium, the vast area is still unknown. So we are trying to demonstrate here the area of the known by all these books. You know, we talk about literature review and we have to bring our, our literature from there to this place to show that this is the area that we know within uh, the, the, the literature. And uh, if you notice, it's like a circle. The edge of the circle, like this, we call the frontier of knowledge. That is the end point of where what we know. From here out there is dark, unknown. So what every scholar, every researcher, every doctoral student will want to do will be to get to know all these things, all the area of the known, which is a literature review, and then be able at the end of the day know the frontier of knowledge in that area. And you now devise your methodology and conduct your research to be able to do to expand the area of the known. Now let me turn to our scholars. These are scholars from the which one do I want to call that from Nigeria? From Nigeria, yeah. Nigeria. Oh. <laughs> so let me ask uh, uh, Ibuku here. What area are you working on? I'm working in the area of health security. Health yes, security. So where, where, what will you be doing with regards to how we are reviewing uh, health uh, related literature scale. Yes. And then after that I'll revise the methodology to be yes. able to expand yeah, it's it's your your it's it's health security exactly. into the unknown. Very good. Yes, how about you? Uh, I'm working on the area of um, food security. Food security, yes. Yes, I'll be reviewing the literatures here on um, food and then I will uh, expand the area of the unknown. Very good. Now let's talk to the people, people, yes. Yes, sir. I'll yes. be working on human security. Human security, yes. yes and I will reviewing literatures from different papers, different thesis and different books here. Very and good. expanding um, expanding the knowledge, not reinventing the wheel. Very good. So expanding. Let's see how you go. How you go expand. Very good. So we expanding. So at the end of the day, the four of us, let us all do it together. Let's expand the area of knowledge. I'm working on the environment. So I will have expand it like this. I will expand it like this. So expand yours. Expand yours. Wonderful. So next year, maybe later in the year, another group of scholars. So let us all leave this place. Let's leave this place. So another group of scholars will then come. When they come, they will find that the frontier of knowledge has expanded and then they will now have more literature uh, to review. The objectives of our lesson for today are five. Five objectives. The first thing we'll do, like we did in the introduction, is to now define literature. Uh, recall that uh, uh, Madam Bingwe de de defined it for us. We're going to get on to another definition. Well, almost like the same thing uh, of it. We're now going to take on objective number two, which is state the purpose of literature review. Why do we want to do literature review? The third is to differentiate, that means look at the differences between good literature review and poor literature review. And the fourth thing is for us to look at the steps in literature review using ICT.
And the last thing, which will take most of the time, for one, two, three, four, we're going to move very fast. But for five, because this is uh, using ICT uh, for literature review, we're going to now carry out practical exercises on the steps which we have identified here in the conduct of literature review. So let's take on objective number one, that is to define literature. My colleague and friend, Professor Barry Fraser, uh, we worked together in uh, Australia, 1991. Uh, there are several definitions, by the way, of literature, but I just picked his because it is short. I also have defined it in a number of ways in some of my, my works, but I'm going to settle for that of Fraser. Fraser uh, defined the literature as the body of published works. In a particular subject. Why I like that of Fraser is that he underlined this objective there published. That is not published, you cannot see it, you cannot access it. So uh, it could be uh, some unpublished material, say that there, which are okay because unpublished thesis or published project or published project reports, you can also use them. But for Fraser, it regards literature as what everybody can have access to published. So what do we have under well, within the definition of literature? We have books, we have journals, we have articles, newspapers, magazines, theses, all of these that we uh, we discussed earlier. So it's a very large pool of resources, which can be like hard copy or electronic. Yeah, you note that during the introduction, I showed you some hard copies of books and journals, and uh, we can also have them. Uh, electronic in different level. Oh, you can see this woman also doing a literature review with her iPad. Why not? So, objective number one is done. Let's take on objective number two. What is the purpose of literature review? Why should you, uh, for instance, uh, Emanuela Aishaki, do literature review on your title from verbs to discuss markers? A couple's driven study of perception of verbs in Kirundi or Giscard uh, Matakara. Why should you do literature review on your study on lithostructural and morphological control of middle proterozoic formations and all of that? And also, Abonima Laurent, we are solving the tectonic metamorphic evolution of Karagwe Akolian belt. So, why should you do literature review in all of this? Now, I'd like you to pause this for a moment and you all in, in, in class, just reflect on the purposes of literature review. Just pause it and, and maybe write, write, write one or two or three down. For me, I'm able to see that the central purpose of literature review is to let you take a critical look, critical, at the published works. I'm referring now again to Barry Fraser, who say published works that already exist in the area you are researching. So taking a critical look at the purpose. Now I've also identified six from this one, I've identified six other major purposes. So why do I want to do literature review for my paper of you for your doctoral thesis? Is to enable you to distinguish between what has been done from what needs to be done. In our introduction, we showed you the area of the known and the area of the unknown. So the area of the known, you want to be able to know what has been done before and then what needs to be done, the dark area. So it means that you've got to, go to come to the frontier of knowledge and be able to get to see all those things in the area that is lit and then look at those ones that are not lit. Number two is to enable you to identify new ways to interpret and shed light on any gaps in previous research. Number three, if there are conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies, is to enable you able to resolve them because you are going to now be in a position to look at the different uh, at perspectives that the original uh, researchers have not been able to see. So three more that uh, I'm listing for you. Uh, is to identify areas of prior scholarship to prevent duplication of effort. Uh, you will recall that 
being uh, in the introductory uh, segment of this of this lesson, uh, talked about her doing work on human security, and she doesn't want to keep duplicating the effort. You see, it's important for us to know that because there are some studies that have already been done and done and done and done, and you actually know the answer. It's just like uh, my receiving an article for publication in an, in an international journal that, that, that says the uh, challenges facing science teachers in Burundi. Oh, I know that thousands of such stories have been done, and they're all repeating the same thing. So why should I be excited for international audience? So I, I would not recommend that uh, journal for uh, that article for publication. The same thing for the thesis. If you are doing a thesis that is something that's already known, the literature is very dense and very thick in that. So it's not going to excite anybody. So that's the reason you have to do literature review, to see what, are, what others have done whether it is an area that is done and done and done and done all over so that you can take on new trajectory. The other one is to point the way forward for further research. Uh, and you see, like, like, like you found out uh, in course of your literature review, that you have uh, somebody saying, okay, this, what I've done, this is an area that is worthy of being attended to by other researchers to, Last one is to place your original work, your, like in case of your thesis, in the context of existing literature. I want you to note that literature review is not a shopping list. It's not a list of everything that exists, but it's critical analysis. For instance, you can see the books that we put together in the introduction. It's just a question of your, uh, just telling you the title, who the authors are, and what they found. For instance, uh, I, I may not be interested uh, in just saying that uh, Lumami Capelula evaluated ecotoxicological eco risk among the uh, river people in uh, Burundi, or that uh, David uh, Mbo Nabuka uh, talked about, I mean, uh, found that shareholding structure and enterprise financial performance uh, could boost. Burundian uh, enterprises. I mean, that's just a shopping list. But you see, a literature review should be a critical analysis that shows an evaluation of the existing literature and the relationship between the different works. We'll come to this. Practical. Our lesson today is practical. As I said, these first four objectives are, uh, uh, we're going to go very quickly, but we're going to have some very interesting practical sessions. So, objective number three, what is the difference between good and poor literature reviews? I have a table here. Can you think about some yourself, based on what you have just said earlier, what would be a good literature review, what would be a poor literature review? But you see, I have a table here for you. As I said earlier, uh, a poor literature review will just do storytelling. Uh, this person said this, I found this descriptive and just a compilation of who did what when and their findings it's like an annotated bibliography i'll show you an example now this is a literature review of a doctoral work and what we are finding is aburuhoma and this person asserted that research in this and all of that i go kid we have the opinion that so just storytelling ahmed and ahmed claim that so this is just storytelling. And Walu also noted in his study that uh, this person and all of that. So this is storytelling. This is poor literature review. But the good literature review, uh, wonderful, be a report of critical analysis and synthesis of previous research and extract of unanswered questions. A good literature review is evaluating rather than mere descriptive. We're going to get there. You're going to see clear examples of good literature review as this lesson progresses. Poor literature review is narrow, narrow and very shallow. But the good one is very comprehensive in breadth and depth. The poor, poor literature review is confusing. Like the one I show you is long-winded, long-winded if you like. That means just going long story, mixing themselves, coordinated but the good literature review is very clear, is concise, and arranged in themes or interconnected 
segments. There could be more that you uh, that you can list, but these are the three that I've just summarized. You know, the teacher doesn't know it all. I mean, we are all learning in this. Uh, uh, we are all learning in this. Uh, uh, in this. Uh, Okay, so that takes us to objective number four, uh, to identify the steps in literature review using ICT. Uh, if you can just reflect on uh, the steps that you that it went through in the conduct of literature review for your first degree project report, for your master's, uh, you'll find that there, there are some clearly defined steps, but I've listed some steps here, five of them, five steps that we are going to walk through during the course of this lesson. So, what are the five steps? Step number one is to get the ICT tool that you want to use for your literature search. Step number two, you use the tool that you have obtained to search for relevant literature for doctoral study or research. Use that tool. First, get tool. Next, use the tool to search. Third, scan through the pages of the search, selecting and saving relevant studies in your local drive. If you recall, in lesson two, number two, uh, part two, we went through some of these uh, steps. Number four is to read through and review each saved study and enter review into the summary table. You will like the summary table that I'm going to provide for you uh, towards the close of this uh, lesson. They write your review chapter from the entries in the uh, summary table. So let's take on step number one, which is to get the ICT tool for a literature search. So how, how, how do you do that? There are several tools, several tools that are available. Indeed, uh, I did do a search of the tools, and what did I find? Yeah, so my search was software for literature search, and I got about 21 million results, of course. Not all would be... Uh, 10 software tools for more PhD productivity and less headaches. Software tools for supporting literature review. Uh, let's even see this one. Software tools for more productivity. Let me point a new tab. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, this 10 software tools for more PhD productivity and less headache. Ah, interesting. So, um, let me just scroll very quickly through this. Rules of thumb to choose software for a PhD. Choose simple software. Choose the software your colleagues choose. Choose software that syncs your data. Oh, that's Ramadan. Ramadan is very fast in responding to my mails. You can see I sent uh, this uh, just this morning, uh, uh, the timetable, and it's responded. Well done, Yadwi Ramadan. Okay, so the tools are this, um, uh, let me just say, uh, Literature Management, Mendeley. is recommending Mendeley, and you can download Mendeley here. Uh, down, there's also Evernote. It's one of the Microsoft uh, Office Suite, Evernote. And all of that. I, I don't want to waste uh, much of the time on this. You can find time to look at this. Uh, because the choice of our... Uh, Tool for this course is Google Scholar. Google Scholar, because of its versatility, because it reaches out to wide databases of electronic resources, books, journals, everything that you may uh, probably need. Of course, you are free to choose any other tool, but for this course, is Google Scholar, Scholar that we are looking. So I've done step one. Step two is now for you to use this tool to search for relevant, relevant literature for your doctoral study or research. So, we're going to begin with some good practice. Yeah, so in beginning our practice, uh, as you noted, the first step is in getting that tool. And uh, the tool is Google Scholar. So, let's get it. So, as we said in an earlier lesson, I think that's uh, lesson two, part two, uh, to get Google Scholar, all you need to do is just Google Google Scholar, or you put it on the address bar to be able to locate it. So, I'm googling Google Scholar, and this is what it is. Of course, this is the URL. Uh, that is a, a site which you can save as a favorite. So, let me 
click on Google Scholar. Uh, so it's giving me Google Scholar. What, what, what I think, what I've asked you to do is to save it as a favorite. You have uh, different ways. Yes, this add to favorite. Yeah. So if you look at it here, uh, it will be the last one that you will see here. Yeah. So this is Google Scholar. So next time, all you need to do is just drop down favorite and get there. If you are using whatever the uh, browser that you are using, you have other, you have this browser here. So you say Google Scholar, this Google Chrome by itself, and then you can add it to favorite. Let me make this bigger. Yes, so Google Scholar. So this is what it is. So I click on it. So I have Google Scholar on another browser. Of course, you can have it in another, the latest explorer, which uh, you can just type uh, Google Scholar there. So I've opened Google Scholar on three different uh, browsers, not three different browsers, the Internet Explorer, which is this one, is, in, is a newer one. You click on it and it gives you Google Scholar. So, uh, whichever one you are looking you're, you're looking at is fine. Now, you can save as, uh, uh, as, as a favorite for any of those. So, let me go on to the first one that I did. Uh, yeah, this one here. Now, the second step is to do my search. To do my search for what? Do my search for the topic that my supervisor had picked. You know, in the in the lesson on using ICT tools for deriving the title, uh, which we walk through practically, we ended up with these two titles. And I showed this to my supervisor, and my supervisor sa said, "Yes, yeah, let's go with this contribution of off farm and non farm income. Make it bigger." to farm productivity and food security in Burundi. So that's the one he likes. So I want to do literature review on this one. It's just like uh, do literature review on any of our uh, other topics. Uh, you notice that these are the topics that uh, we agreed upon as tentative. I just scroll through quickly through this. If you find your name, uh, these are the topics that we that you propose rene is a busy dft analysis of raw vibrational spectra of substituted thiophenocarbonitrile derivatives and all the others like that those are yours this is mine so what do i do i just copy this copy this and i go to my tool i go to my tool excuse me google scholar i want to search for articles Relating to the title of my thesis, and then do literature review. I uh, review them. Oh, it's not pasting. Okay. Yeah, so I've pasted it here. Uh, let me make it bigger again. Mm. That's it. Contribution of off farm and non farm. So that's the title. So I'm doing a search. I've just clicked on this uh, to begin my search for the relevant articles, and it has come with uh, make it uh, I'll just bigger. Yeah. So you can see I have 722 results, meaning that if all of them were articles that I like, there would be about 722 articles. Of course, more than enough for the literature that I will cite for my study. But of course, not all of them will be uh, relevant for your work. Uh, so the second, uh, the, the third uh, uh, the, set, the third step is, uh, so we have used the tool to search for relevant literature. Third step is to scan through the pages of, e of the search, selecting and saving relevant studies in your local drive. This is where we are now. And then, but let's remind ourselves of the next steps. Read through each one and then write your literature review chapter. Oh, no, no. Read through and review each saved study and enter the review in the summary table. You know, I mentioned this summary table that is very important. Uh, I'm going to show you even before I get to uh, this step. So let's scan through the pages. Yeah, so these are the pages, quite, quite a number. But what I want to do is uh, look at the studies that are relatively more recent. What does that mean? It means those ones may be for, my, for the purpose of my work, those that have been conducted recently. If you look at here, uh, let me make this bigger. I'll go to it. Uh, we have, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. 
Okay. You see custom range. I want it to be between 2015 and 18. If I do since 2014, it will go 2014 to 2018, 2017 to 2018. But I want it from 2015 to 2018. So all you need to do is just click on custom range. And I want 2015 to 2018. And I will go to search. So what have we got? You can see it's searching. We are, that's 70, okay, we have only 174. Well, I'm happy with that. And then we go on to begin to see these ones, assessing the cross-sectional and intertemporal value of the household food insecurity access skill. This looks, you know, this looks quite good. And as we learned in the last lesson, what we begin to do now is to select the ones that we want, saving them to the hard drive. Can you recall how we did them? Well, what we did was, if we say we like this, we can come to here and uh, the PDF will right-click it to open it in a new tab because we want to keep seeing this page. That is why I want to open in a new tab. So it's open. Uh, so this is it. Assessing the cross-sectional and it. Okay, that's fine. So it's giving me a whole, a whole, yes, the whole article. As you can see, methods and see all of this. So this is nice. And can you recall what you say we'll do in that step? We'll save to a local drive. And so you just go to file, save as. Now I got to okay, it's taking me back to that. That's very nice. But for today, I'm in lesson four. And so I can say uh save literature. And click on this and then this is good I can say good one for this one or good one yes good one. so it is saved and I can maybe close this because I'm going to come back to be reading through all of them uh, yes let me make this bigger now let's see what am I doing now okay I think it's this one here Yes, so potential impact of alternative agricultural technologies to ensure food security and raise income of farm households in Rwanda. Mm, it looks okay. Uh, uh, this one looks quite good. Assessing the cross section. That's what I did now. Yes, this one I did. Burundi. It's talking about Burundi here. Uh, employment condition in Senegalese or the cultural export industry, a worker perspective. Um, maybe not. Are there options outside uh, livestock? Maybe not. Determinants of market particular intensity of marketed surplus of this. Uh, maybe not that. This is a book. Africa's changing farm land ownership, rise of the emerging investor. No. Yeah, this one, the farm size productivity. Okay. Red, wide range of farm sizes. I, I think this may be it. And uh, uh, although I don't know whether it's uh, you. You must have mentioned Burundi at some point here. So I'll go to this, I right click, open this, and then this. Yes, come on. Let's give a comment down now. Yeah, so this is it. I thought we saw this. Oh, yeah, the last one. This looks quite good. Yes, it's nice. So we save it. Okay, you can call it good, good too. Wonderful. So we keep going on like that until we have, we have looked at the 174. Uh, so this number two, number three, number four. Uh, that's the uh, second page. So determinants of, yeah. So we'll, we'll keep going. It may take you maybe like about, uh, uh, let's see, 30 minutes. 30 minutes at best. Because we are just looking, reading through from the titles and just saving them. And that will have taken you through almost all the li libraries in all the continents of the world, everywhere. That's the beauty of the ICT in a literature review. So you don't need to be going to a library in the World Bank or in Nigeria or all over Burundi. You get them sitting right there on your screen. Now, let me tell you a, a shortcut, which you find, I'm sure, very interesting. Let's go to page one. 
Now, rather than you saving and saving and saving as you go along, what you can do, I will show you some interesting features of Google Scholar. Uh, what is this? This is my profile. I will come to it in a minute, although we don't need it for now. Then you have this, my library. I will recommend that all of you in class should uh, uh, register, uh, sign, off, uh, so sign up to Google uh, so that you can have this facility, my library. Now, if I click on my library, what do we have here? Hmm. I have nothing right here. So let me go back to uh, uh, my profile and I'll show you what, I, what is there. My profile gives you some indication of uh, how well you are cited. Uh, this is me, by the way, uh, Lagos State University, my specialization, science, computer and environment education, quality assurance and education, and the like. Now, we're going to come to this. We are going to see some matrices, some measures of me as a, as a scholar. Uh, these are my citations, all 3,789 since 2013, this. My H index, my I10 index, these, these are the ones. I will encourage you to sign up uh, for Google Scholar so that you can have these uh, matrices uh, measures. So these are uh, some of my articles over the years. P. Okibukola and Jegede, Okibukola, Okibukola, uh, yeah, and Warden. Yeah, you see, th th this is an interesting article that, you know, when I was a uh, visiting professor at the Court University of Technology in Australia, I had with my Indonesian uh, students the gender factor in computer anxiety and interest among some Australian high school uh, students, Jogede and Okibukola, Jogede and Okibukola, and all of that. So th th this goes on like that, but that's not why we are here. Yeah, we are here to <clears throat> check out all this literature that we, have, uh, we, are, we are trying to select. So how does this My Library come into it? Did you see this star here? Do you see this star here? That is the thing. Now, watch what is going to happen. Uh, Non-farm entrepreneurship in rural sub saharan Africa. No empirical evidence. No, I don't like that. Assessing the cross-sectional and inter-temporal validity of the household. You know, that's the one we talked about before. So all you need to do, look at here. You can see it has come up with. Let me make it bigger so that you will see what we mean. Uh, look at this. It's coming up as save, save, save. Okay, let me reduce it a little bit. So this one, save. Just click on this. And you can see the turning, it has saved it to the library. We keep going. Potential impact of alternative agricultural practices in uh, Rwanda. Maybe we take it. So this. Employment conditions in Senegal is Senegalese. I said, no. Agri technology adoption, uh, small rural rice farmers. Welfare in rural Nigeria. Okay, maybe we want this. Uh, determinants of market participation. We don't need that. Okay, so we want this. The Konde one. Uh, we'll go on to the next. So that is the shortcut I'd like you to adopt. That is, set up a, sort of uh, uh, sign into a Google uh, Scholar. And then, and how do you do that? Just Google Google Scholar and then go to sign in. Uh, Diversification, diversification, climate risk, maybe not. An economic spread, no. Quasi Natal, macro, this, this. So it's left to you. This looks good. Evidence from Burundi. This looks good. This error. This looks good. Now, it's left to you to uh, select the one that you want. And uh, that's actually the first level, which you can do much later. It's only one for after full security. Okay, so you go on to all the others. Now, let's now go back to this, my library. If you click on my library, you know, we said about five, four, five of, of this. So you can see. It, yeah, so you can see. Those are the ones I've just selected. So this is better for you. All you need to do is click on that uh, save, that, uh, save star, and then it, saved, it will save all of this to your library. So this 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 now be your second step. Now second step will now be for you to download the download the, the papers. But before that, let me show you one thing that we'll need to uh, do as we look at that at that table, that summary table. 
Now that leads me to quickly show you that summary table and of course we will get back to it. So I've called it the matrix for summarizing literature review. By the way, you can't get it anywhere. Uh, it's based on my own experience. Uh, so you can call it the okay color matrix if you like. By the way, you don't need to put okay color there. Just matrix for summarizing literature review. So you have serial number. That's the first number one. You have got to enter the details of each of those studies into here. Why am I bringing it up early? I'm bringing it up early because of this full reference of the article or paper or book or whatever then so i want to i want to fill this fill this uh, cell here so how do i fill the cell now if you look at this this is a quote quote this is a quote this is a quote this is a quote you know for your doctoral study or for your paper scholarly paper you got to put the full citation, the full reference there. And there are different references styles. And you got to follow the styles. The one that I am used to in my uh, computer science education, environment education, is called the APA, American Psychological As uh, Association, the APA referencing format. So what you'll do for this article, you need to just double click. You can see cite. Double click on site or maybe single click, and it comes with a site. You can see this is the MLA citation, this is the APA, that's our my own American Psychological American Psychological Association. You have the uh, Chicago, you have the Harvard, you have the Vancouver, and then you can send it to the Bibtex, EndNote, and RefMan and RefWorks. But what I want to do because I want the APA. So what you should, we should, we should you do, you just click on this and copy it, copy, and then come back to your, uh, let's see where we are, yeah, come back to your matrix and just paste. Simple. So you don't need, I really love this. Google Scholar has done it very well for us. Rather than you uh, begin to type, let me close this, begin to type uh, vermin P, uh, Munoz, Mora, JC, uh, 20, where is it now? 2018, returning home for this, I'll be doing the citation. I'm missing the Journal of Development Studies. I'm missing the technicalities of that citation. All you need to do, just click on this. Let's take the second one. Just click on this site. And uh, this is it. Copy. Mm, very nice. I really love this. So that is ICT for you, how you use ICT for a literature review. That is one of the good things. So I uh, right click and paste. So that's it. That's number two. That's my, num number two uh, study. Let me do one more. I close this. Testing farm size. You click on this. Yes, you can see it's rolling. It gives me this. I right click. I copy. I close this. I come to here, I do my number three, here, yeah, and this, I paste. So, we have done it, very nice. Yes, of course, all of this will be in your library, and then you can come and uh, do what? Uh, now you begin to save those ones that you have selected out of the 170 something. To your hard drive so we just go uh, let's see we'll save this one uh, let's save this Bosorov versus Malthus okay we've not saved this so let's see this one yeah yeah so that does it some desire and say Contributed paper to this in 2015. So let's save it. Uh, save us. So we can call this one good three. Okay. So we'll have saved the ones that we we think are good for our literature review. Now back to the steps. We have scanned the pages. We have selected, and we have saved the relevant studies in our local drive. Step so number one done. Two done. Three done. Number four, this is where you spend some little time. 
to read through and review each safe study and enter review into the summary table. All we have entered in the summary table is just the full reference, the citation. So let's go back now and read through every article. I'm just going to do one or two and uh, I will leave you to do the rest for your literature uh, review. And then number five is how you write it. How you write all you have in the summary table uh, as uh, as a literature review chapter of your doctoral thesis. Yeah, so we'll get back now to where we saved it, where, where, where we saved it as saved literature. So we'll go to good one. Let me click on good one. Yes, so this is it. So you spend some time to read through this. Assessing the cross-sectional and inter, inter temporal validity of the household food security access skill in Burundi. What are you looking for when we are reading this? This is what you keep in mind. And that takes us to the metrics. We're looking for the theme within, or I think we can change the sub theme. Yeah, no, theme is fine. Theme within your study. The major findings. The strengths of that paper. The weaknesses of the paper. And the value that it has added to other related studies. And the lessons that we will learn. I note that in the virtual class, some students said, oh, they learn new vocabulary. That's important. As a young, up-and-coming doctoral student that will become a professor one day and contributing to national and global literature, you should have some less of vocabulary as you read. So you can note some vocabulary, new vocabulary, voc new methodology, methodology that uh, the person is coming up with. That's why I would like you to review studies between 2015 or 2016 and 2018. This will give you some recent, recent methods. The new, uh, new data analysis technique and, and others. What lessons have you learned? So, uh, in preparing you for this, uh, for this lesson, a virtual class asks that you should take one article and read them thoroughly and come up with the major findings, the strengths, the weaknesses, and the lessons that you have learned. So we are going to bring in our experience from that to here. So let me review some of the things that you did uh, with you. Yeah, so here we go. These are the reviews that you did. Uh, Richard, let me see. Let me remind us of what Richard did. Uh, Richard uh, looked at social audit and uh, he, he looked at uh, uh, this is the article and he gave us the strengths of the paper. He gave us the weaknesses of the paper and he gave us the three lessons learned. So you, all you are doing is for every article you do exactly like this. Uh, let's take some other. Uh, let's look at Henry. Uh, if you go back to our uh, to the virtual class we had uh, a few days ago, you'll be able to see this. So this is the article that is relevant to his study. Uh, these are the three lessons that he learned. Uh, and these are the strengths and these are the weaknesses. So we got it all like that. So I think those two examples we do because everybody in the class st uh, researched an article, sub uh, extracted an article, read through the article, looked at the strengths, looked at the weaknesses, and then, you know, summarize your thing that way. So if I now take you back to the matrix for summarizing literature review, we did uh, last week, uh, uh, during the virtual class, you, we had this, the full reference, you had this. Theme, we didn't have it. The major findings, you have it. The strengths, you have it. The weaknesses, you have it. The lessons learned, you have it. So what you need to do, is to include to the theme and then the value added to other re related studies and you'll be able to populate this matrix. This matrix, when you have done it, your literature review is almost complete. All you are doing now is synthesizing, bringing all of these together. So let us still proceed with our practical work. Uh, for, the, for this study, uh, let's go to it. Yeah, so this is uh, 
intertemporal validity of the household full security access skill. So this like developed the themes about instruments for measuring household food insecurity. So the, the, this one will be uh, the instrument. So I can just go back there and put that as the theme of the paper. The theme will be instruments for measuring. Let me make it bigger so that we all can all see it better. Household insecurity. Okay. Household. So the major findings, you can get this from the abstract. Let's go back to the abstract. Of course, you have to read it. Results, two bit models should. Let's make it bigger. Yep. Yes, that's it. Two bit models showed that the HFIAS was significantly correlated with objective measures of food security. In this case, this is the, the confirms that HA is a cross sectionally valid and corroborates the findings of previous studies. However, while total, this, this, this. So, what you can do after reading this, you may just Take the one that you think belongs, and then uh, we can copy this and go back to our major findings and paste. Uh, by the way, at the background now, I'll be using uh, Control V. Uh, if you check this, it will put uh, because it's converting from this to this. Uh, you can just close this up like this. Close this up like this. Uh, close this up like this. You over time be modifying. Yeah, so I've closed everything here. Uh, this finding questions the intertemporal validity of the HFIS. It may be partly explained through response shifts in which households assess their own full security status in comparison to that of their peers. Now, this is important for maybe uh, its strengths. Its strengths would be uh, it questions. Uh, the explain through this, yeah, yeah. It will not be no. It may not be sufficient for you to just get this directly from uh, the abstract. So that is why you have to read everything to be able to get the strengths and the weaknesses, and on the base of that, yeah, this sample production. So you have to read. There are eleven. You can see now. 11 pages you have to read that's why you the literature review you have to review it be analytical be critical uh, of this so uh, maybe i go to learn a new analysis technique from here uh, so methodology so cross-sectional validity and all of that now i'm going to read this and then uh, while at it I will give you the summary of what I'm able to derive on my matrix. So discussion, I pass I show that this, okay. Uh, so uh, you can pause, I mean, well, I'm pausing, I'm taking you offline now, and then I'm going to read through this and get back to you. So just hang on there. Okay, so see what, what we have done. The full reference I did before, the theme within my study, now, this one is talking about an instrument. So it is instrument for measuring household security. This one will be important when we are doing the subheads for writing my report on the literature review. So what are the findings? This confirms that the HFIAS is cross-sectionally valid, cross valid and corroborates all of this. So these are uh, the findings. Uh, the strengths. It is conducted, let me put this as two bullets. Uh, the bullets are two. Okay. So let me make this bigger so we can see as we go along. Uh, it is conducted within Burundi, my study area. So that's of help. It is one of the early studies to test HFIAS as an instrument. Now it shows that the HFIAS is cross sectionally, I think, uh, valid indicator of food. These are its threats. The weaknesses the sample size is small. And the assumptions for the statistic used may not have been met. What are the values that it has added? What value added? The study 
uh, did not focus on the internal validity of HFIS as this aspect of the indicator has already been validated in previous studies. So the value is that it didn't just go to uh, the internal validity but because that one has been proven over the years, but it focused on the external. So what are the lessons that uh, I learned in this study? Uh, let's see now. Yeah, new vocabulary, new methodology. I learned that the I learned of the need. Let me put this as bullets also. Back here. Yeah, the need to use an instrument that is an indicator of food insecurity that is internally cross culturally cross sectionally and inter temporarily valid and that captures all aspects of food insecurity. Yeah. And then the new method of, I also learned new method of calculating sensitivity analysis. Uh, where is that now? Let me uh, show you. There's a new method for calculating sensitivity analysis that uh, uh, that came up, which I saw uh, while I was reading this. Okay, add descriptive statistics. Yeah, I just get to it in a minute. Yeah, sensitivity analysis. This, this, this is a very important method that I, that I learned here. So that's article number one. It could be article number one of 500 or 200 or 20 that we'll be reviewing, but we are going to put them in this matrix. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a matrix that will that help us for the last step in writing up the literature uh, review. So let's even take one. Let's assume that this one is one of uh, the studies that we had before. Let's take that of uh, Richard. Richard, let's assume that this is the thing. So all you need to do is just be copying lessons learned. You are copying this like this. Uh, copy. Uh, coming to the matrix. And then uh, uh, the lessons learned is here. Yeah. So you just paste. So apparently, we have done the less. Anyway, it can be formatting later. So we have done four of the of of the tables here of the of the columns. We have done this. We can put this one there. The major findings, the strengths, the weaknesses, lessons less. So all you are doing is just doing the value added. So all members of the class, you have had some practice in doing uh, the things that will go into uh, this matrix. Well done. Yes, a little <laughs> technique before we round up uh, this matrix, uh, which is that you can see the subheads here. If you go to the next page, you can see we have missed subject. I don't know whether this one is the major finding, whether this one is this, whether this one is that, and it goes on. You don't know what it is. So the technique that I want you all to learn, because this table, this matrix may run for hmm, 40 pages. We have done only two, and we have three, two and a, half, two and a quarter pages here. So... You want this. You want this. This subheads, or rather, this uh, heads, to be showing everywhere. So what you'll do? Listen carefully. Let me even improve the design of this. Let me say I use a green. Yep, like this, a green. Let's move this one here. So let me tell you what I did again. Let me undo, undo. What I did was to go to design and i selected the design you can select any design let me select uh, this one okay i've selected this so what i did was just to move this so i can see i moved this here just see, move this one here so i can see the table what i was saying is we don't know what subhead is this one Not, nobody knows anything nobody knows so to know you all you need to do is go to layout Mm, you see, layout, layout here. Just click on any one here. Layout and click, look at this one. Repeat header rows. I do not know which version of Microsoft Word you are using, but whichever one it is, it has this facility. So just look for it. So when I click, re click uh, repeat header rows, you can see I've, I've clicked it. Let's go to page two. You can see we have it here. Isn't that nice? Yes, of course it is not. Let's go to page three. You can see we have it here. So I will encourage you 
to use it. You want me to repeat it? Yes, I can. Let me undo. Yeah, so you can see I've, uh, I've done it twice. So I move this one here. I just click on this set. Just click on look anywhere here, anywhere, anywhere here, any or any of the this set, and then you go to layout, and they go to repeat header rows. So that is it here. Wonderful, wonderful. Seven. So back to our steps. Number one done. We've taken it two. Number two done. We've saved. Number three we have scanned. Number four and we've saved. Number four we have read through and we have entered the review into the summary table. Number five and the last for this lesson is we want to now write our review chapter from the entries in the summary table. Now it becomes more interesting. Yeah, so here we go, writing literature review from the matrix. Let's begin with tips for writing a good literature review. Some tips. Now, your literature review will be a chapter. And uh, that's for a doctoral thesis. For a scholarly paper, it's just going to be a section. For the doctoral thesis, is typically like a chapter two after the chapter one, the introductory chapter. It can be any chapter number based on the guidelines of your university or what your supervisor says. But for most universities that I'm familiar with, and in my area, science, science education, computer education, environment, it is chapter two, literature review. So this is the chapter. This is what you're going to have while writing up. You're going to have an introduction, and you're going to have several subsections. Because subsections are different from one thesis to another, so you can't, I can't put the names here. So you can have subsection one, subsection two, subsection three and four, then summary and unanswered questions. That will be the last but one uh, section of your literature review, and then you have the conclusion. Let, let's look at a couple of doctoral theses uh, uh, using this kind of format. Yeah, let's look at one uh, PhD one from uh, that I'm supervisor of. Uh, what we have here, let me just scroll very quickly down to the literature review, the abstract, table of contents. Okay, chapter one is introduction. Chapter two is the review of liter related literature, like literature review. You have the introduction, you have the theoretical framework, and then these are the sections. Section, 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 sections. And then you have uh, empirical studies on this appraisal of review literature and then conclusion. Let's take another one. Yeah, let's take this one. It's uh, from South Africa, uh, one of the top universities in South Africa. You have uh, chapter two, uh, literature review. You have the introduction, uh, nature of science and all that. Then the different sec sections, sections, practical considerations. You have a summary there. So this is another pattern. Let's take a third pattern. Uh, this one is uh, potency of student. Well, that's the title. Uh, it's a doctoral uh, uh, person that I supervised. And you can see we have, uh, let's go there now. Okay, fine. You have chapter one, which is the introduction. And you have chapter two, which is review of li related literature. You have the introduction, theoretical framework. And then you have the different sections. As I said, the sections will reflect the, the, the uh, thing that is being studied. The area of this study, you have you know, appraisal of re 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 literature review and conclusion. So these are different models. So as I said earlier, the sections are different. What will be common is to have an introduction, I have a conclusion. But this one is very important, the summary and the unanswered uh, uh, questions. So let's uh, go on to, uh, yes, you see, for every section of the review, if you note, we have all these sections, subsection one, this, 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 this. For every, uh, let's see, for every section there or subsection, you should have an overview of the subject or issue or theory under consideration. And then you must provide those in support of a particular position and those against and those offering alternative thesis entirely let's go back to our matrix because from our matrix that you'll be getting all of this let me finish with this and then you go to our matrix 
explanation of how each work is similar to and how it varies from the others. Their conclusions as to which studies are best considered in their argument are the ones that are most convincing of their opinions are the ones that make greatest contribution to literature in the area. So back to our matrix, because it's from this matrix that we're using for writing the, uh, the uh, literature review. Now, for the sections, this will be the theme, the theme within your study. This will, you can use this to aggregate to the different sections. And then you have the major findings. This will let you know whether they are agreeing or disagreeing, uh, the strengths, the weaknesses. This is very important, the value added to other related studies. So this is where you'll be using for the critique. And of course, this one will be lessons learned that you can also be using. So this matrix is very, very, very important. So uh, you want to make a note of it. We're going to share it with you in class. And uh, maybe you want to pause this video. Pause the video and uh, you can take a screenshot of this to enable you uh, use the table outside of this lesson. Yeah, so let's look about citations. You know, if you're citing in the literature review, you'll be making reference and all that. So there are two types, mainly the integral one and the non-integral one. What is the integral citation? This is where you have the author name uh, appears in the sentence. As you have the author and this system. For instance, you have Shabani 2013 argues that diversity of cultural expressions is context specific. It can be non integral. That's going to be, you have this one at the end of the sentence. The author's name appears outside sentence. So it can then read diversity of cultural expressions in Africa, including dance, dress, and language, is dependent on the local context. Good. They have Shabani 2013. That, these are the two types of citations. Now, this slide is very important. If you ask me to pick the uh, the slide that is most important in this presentation, it is this one. Because we did say that the good literature review should be evaluative, should be critical, should not just be a storytelling narrative kind of thing. Let, let me refer you to that table in a minute. Yeah, so here's the table. We said the good literature review should report critical analysis and synthesis, it must synthesize, it must be critical analysis of previous research and extract unanswered questions. It is evaluative rather than mere descriptive. So this is what must reflect in your writing of the literature review. So let's go back to our guide. So it is this. Uh, yeah, this is one of our students coming on. I'm going to read this. Or I don't like people reading PowerPoint slides. By the way, I'm not using PowerPoint. I'm using another software called Prezi. Uh, it's a good software, as you may have noticed. It is not Microsoft PowerPoint. So, uh, as I said, I don't like people reading like this. It's insulting to the audience. But for the purpose of what I've written, I'm going to read every word. So let's look at it. While the study by Nizigama 2018 which compared the implementation of gender policies in Burundi, Rwanda, and Uganda showed huge similarities. That of Melan's 2014 failed to reach similar conclusions. This can be ascribed to the methodological flaw in Melan's 2014 study, which used very small sample sizes from the three countries. So you can see here, we have synthesized, we have critiqued, and we have explained. Let's look at the second one. Many of the findings of studies conducted on the contribution of GIS applications for wastewater management over the last six years are in accord regarding the usefulness of GIS software. And then you indicate those who, have, who are in accord, those who have carried out the research. Mpundu 2015, Mokabo 2016, and Ngeze Buhoro, 2017. By the way, these are students in our class. <laughs> However, Ndayishimiye, 2018. You know, Richard is working on the social audit. Good man. 
However, Dashimiye 2018, working on social audit, has disagreed with these findings on the strength of previous studies, not recognizing social audit as a factor in waste water management. So we have not just come here to say uh, the Gamma found that so and so, uh, Belance found so and so. We have critically analyzed, we have synthesized, and we have evaluated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we should be reporting our literature review. And you can, you can derive this from that matrix that we uh, prepared. So in citing sources, there are some things you should avoid. Avoid plagiarism. It's going to get into trouble. Avoid irrelevant quotations, quotations that are not relevant to what you are discussing. And you must introduce, put one sentence or two before having your quotation. So you, 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 don't need to, you, you should not have unintroduced quotations. So the final checklist, this is another very important slide in this presentation. After you have finished writing your report, what are you supposed to do? Now use this checklist. Ladies and gentlemen, use this checklist. Now what is it? Ask your questions. Have I fulfilled the purpose of the literature review? Yes. Are the facts correct? You go through all of them. Yes. Is all the information included relevant? You check the ones that are not relevant. Throw them out. Is the language clear, concise, and academic? Yes. You recall that the... Uh, let, let me take you back to that slide. About poor literature review and good literature review. Here we say it should be... This is confusing, long-winded, long -winded and uncoordinated. Here it's very clear, concise, and arranged in themes or interconnected segments. So, yes, concise. Is the body organized logically? Logically, introduction, the different sections, summary on answer questions, and conclusion. Does the conclusion interpret, analyze, and evaluate? Are the recommendations reasonable? Now, have I acknowledged all the sources of information through correct referencing? Have I checked spelling? Have I checked grammar? Have I checked punctuation? And the last on the final checklist is, have I carefully proofread the final draft? If you have done all of this, then you are good to go to your supervisor and say, yes, here is my literature review chapter. What have we learned in this lesson? This lesson, we'll try to define the term literature, uh, noting that in the first introductory uh, part, uh, being quite defined in French, uh, Salako, inter in, uh, Salako interpreted in English, and we had some. But later, we also had a, a, a definition by uh, Fraser. Uh, 2012. We stated the purpose of literature review. You know you are going to have a test in a few days for this lesson, so your test is going to be built on the objectives of this lesson. All of this will be part of the test, just 10 items. We differentiated between good and poor literature reviews. We identified the steps in literature review using ICT, five steps. So please note those five steps. And we conducted practical exercises on five steps on the use of ICT for conducting literature review. The next lesson is going to be equally nice, equally exciting. I'll be looking at the methodology part of this, our work. ICT in the methodology part. We'll be looking at ICT with regard to instrumentation, data collection in doctoral studies. And uh, no, before I go, uh, Richard uh, uh, shared this in his uh, in his slide, Murakose Kane. Murakose Kane, thank you. And I also got one last one, Naga Saga. I don't know why I pronounce it right, but what I'm saying is goodbye for now. I am Peter Okebukola, your facilitator. It's a delight presenting this lesson. I look forward to seeing you in lesson five on, remind you again, instrumentation and data collection in doctoral. Uh, story. So, bye-bye for now and thank you for your attention.